Oh, hello, oh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Fashion Coffee Hour. I'm Stanley Smith, and I'm here as always with Marcy Carmack. We're looking over the uh, the new script for the MGM film House of Gucci, which is coming out in November. Now, Marcy, what what is the most important part of of playing uh, playing any character in a film? Knowing your role. <laughs> of course, Marcy. And the most important part of of playing your role is dressing the part. <laughs> Yeah, I guess you're right, Marcy. I guess that's why we're looking over the script so closely. We're trying to we're looking for the finer fashion tips, but let's just cut to the chase and take a look at this great trailer from MGM. And this is starring Lady Gaga, who I have to say I saw the clip a couple of times before I realized who Lady Gaga was, because the makeup and styling is so fantastic. She she literally is transformed into a different person, a different character, isn't she? Well, I think we also don't. I the same thing happened with me, Stan. <laughs> But I think we also don't think of her as a leading lady. She's a leading singer. Um, so, you know, you just, it doesn't, it's not the first person to come to your mind. Well, I'm glad she was transformed because I'm sure she got a big kick out of doing that for this role because uh, fashion and accessorizing and styling is such an important part of Lady Gaga's character in real life. And she made it her own in this terrific trailer from House of Gucci. It was a name that sounded so sweet, so seductive. Synonymous with words, style, power. But that name was a curse too. I've been a Gucci all my life. Your name is in the history books. Power. You are Gucci, you need to dress the part. It's chic. Quite a cast. Yeah. Oh, Gucci needs new blood. It's time to take out the trash. They're my family. So am I. You picked the real firecracker. She's a handful. Bravo. I don't consider myself to be a particularly ethical person, but I am fair. Can you keep a secret? Father, son, and house of Gucci. Well, I see that's a very fun, very fun clip. And so fun to see all this cast of characters, as you said. Now we uh, we also took a look at some some uh, slides and some pictures to kind of give a little background of the story. But wait, before you start, Stan, because we're still putting the the movie together. You know, we only yes. have a few little clues. But when she's in a car and has Maurizio's picture on it, it would seem that she's having him somebody kill him. <laughs> She's not doing it herself. She doesn't well, need a picture. <laughs> we don't want to give away the plot of the film, but I guess it's pretty obvious that there is some murder and some intrigue going on. And uh, I guess we almost could have gone in reverse order and given you the family family history first, but I guess we'll do that last. And uh, starting off with with uh, Gucci Oguchi, who, is, who founded the House of Gucci based on his father's uh, luggage and leather craft shop in the late 1800s. He... Uh, was inspired by his work in Savoy Hotel, is that right? Well, he, yeah, he lived in London, and um, yeah, he was very—he was influenced by the English, and brought that to his business in Italy. And then, like any great family story, the son, the father begets the son, and the son. Uh, this is his son, then Aldo, who continues the company, and then his son, Maurizio. Yeah. The House of Gucci film that will be out in November is based on. Maurizio's relationship with his second wife, Trizia. 
here they are uh, pictured and they are definitely characters. <laughs> I, again, I was really so struck by how Lady Gaga was so transformed. I really think you can really pick up on the eye makeup and the styling that they picked up from these vintage photographs and, and really incorporated it into Lady Gaga's character. I was thinking this Patrizia looks like a mini Sophia Roulette. Oh, you're right. Sophia Loren. Right. And then uh, Marcy and I were talking about some of the things that seem very indicative for good and for bad about the Gucci brand. And Marcy mentioned the green and red stripe. She was less enthused about the uh, pattern, the signature pattern, and in the locking G's. But I think she, we sold her on the horse bits. You love the horse bits. I do. <laughs> it's classic, original Gucci. I was intrigued that the, uh, the interlocking fabric pattern didn't really arrive until the 60s. Uh, also, a fun photo we came across was this photograph of Grace Kelly visiting the, the boutique in Rome. And the uh, House of Gucci actually created a special scarf, Floria scarf, just for Grace Kelly. And then some vintage uh, advertisements. And Marcy, we both agreed. We thought this was obviously an advertisement for the bags and less so than for the as clothes. As far as I know, they yeah, weren't we doing fashion. Yes, exactly. They were a leather and handbag and luggage company. And a photograph of Jackie Kennedy, with a very uh, discreet Gucci style bag. Which uh, they, re they reissue recent years. That particular bag? Interesting. Well, Marcy, you've got a good, you've got a good eye for these things. And then this, of course, is the interlocking pattern, which I included late in the deck because it really arrived late. I was surprised that it was not introduced until the '60s, as I recall. So that was interesting. Like Louis Vuitton and those brands, that was really part and parcel of their of their product line early on. Gucci incorporated it later, probably as a way to commoditize the brand and, and uh, monetize it to the best of their ability. And then later, more recent reiterations in the uh, 90s, some more avant-garde styles, and then most notably with the partnership with Tom Ford. That was an important Yeah, time. and this was a suit that Gwyneth Paltrow made famous. Okay. I know we've talked about the velvet suit, and we also looked at one with uh, Vivian Westwood. I think she had a Vivian's velvet suit. So we do see that as a recurring thing, velvet suit. And this was the most recent show we looked at this winter, I believe. Which this was, was a Gucci and Balenciaga show. It was mostly Gucci because it's Gucci's 100th anniversary. <laughs> well, and also, as we were probably going to learn from this film, Marcy, you do not you don't want to mess around with these Gucci, these Gucci people. <laughs> you don't want to get on the bad side. Marcy, what was your takeaway from looking at the House of Gucci and the... Uh, History of Gucci. What were your your takeaways? Things people can keep in mind when watching the film. Hmm. Good question, Stan. <laughs> Sometimes. You, uh, well, well, my takeaway was just the whole idea of the uh, the passion that's involved with creating a brand or any any business enterprise, and then combining it with uh, family and some of the challenges and uh, conflicts that, that naturally comes with, and then the whole phenomenon we've. we've We've encountered in the modern time of, of corporate takeover and the corporatization of, of brands, famous brands, which really started out as family businesses and the tension between a family business and then large scale operations of corporations. And then most notably, you mentioned the, the uh, Louis Vuitton, that they're on again, off again attempt to take over smaller houses such as Gucci. Yeah. So um, I think for me, I would say you said, telling people about what to look for. Um, I think that in fashion, it's typically uh, creatives are emotional. There is a lot of passion and that's what they bring to the table and it's positive and negative. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be sure to write that into the script, Marcy. I also, my favorite line from that, that short trailer was uh, the Patricia's character played by Lady Gaga when she said, I'm not, I'm not the most ethical person, but I am an honest person. And I think it just points up to the idea that. I don't believe she said she was honest. <laughs> she said so she said she was fair, 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 fair. Yes, you're right, Marcy. But I think that just points up the idea that, uh, you know, 
even flawed people, flawed as we all are, we all we all have something to offer, Marcy. And some of us offer style and fashion, and we can thank the House of Gucci for bringing that to us today. We, uh, of course, will look forward to seeing you again this evening at six o'clock Central Time on Mondays at Fashion Coffee Hour. When we bring back the panel, I know we'll have Ray here, who actually worked for Gucci for some time, and he worked for them during this this uh, challenging, zany time when they had this uh, murder intrigue. So we look forward to seeing everybody this evening at six p.m. Central Time. Until then, everybody take care. Take care. <laughs> Watch out for the gunfire. Bye-bye. <laughs>